All right, so here we go. Everybody ready? So I have found that when I tell my students, get your clickers ready, and if it's a fastest responder, they get really engaged. In fact, all I have to do is tell my students, because if I lecture for a little bit, um, all I have to really do is tell my students, oh, I get your clicker, and they're, they're into it. They're, they're really engaged. We kind of, I actually use the clickers on the very first day of class. So on the very first day, I bring them in. I want to build the culture. I want to get them used to using them before we actually are using them for any kind of high-stakes quizzes and so forth. So um, it's just kind of the culture. And in fact, I will tell you that um, I use them pretty much every day. There's one class lecture that I don't use them. And I remember last semester when I came in and I didn't have the clickers in the front of the room. And the students came in and they usually, you know, it's again, it's the culture. They come in and they pick up and there were no clickers. And they're like, Professor, where's the clickers? Are they okay? Are the clickers okay? They're, they got actually really worried about the clickers. I said, they're fine. They're taking a vacation from you guys. So, um, all right, let's see how everybody did. All right, so 46% said seven. That is actually the correct answer. Notice my correct answer indicator. And let's see who the fastest responder is. In 5.32 seconds, if you flip over on the back of the uh, receiver or on the back of your clicker, whoever is 296A03. Woohoo! Congratulations! That a girl! <laughs> did, did, did she cheat? Are you saying she cheated? So, very good. So, it gets the students engaged and, and so forth in the questions. All right, another thing that you can do. Yes, I'm sorry. Please do. Okay, good. That's a, very, that's a very good question. I didn't know, I don't know the answer to that. I knew that if you changed your answer, it obviously would, but I didn't know if, uh, thank you, thank you. Knowledge for me as well. So, good thing. And by the way, if you guys have any questions that you want to ask throughout, please stop me and, and ask and me. Just so you guys, it, real quick, yeah. sorry. For these, which is the ones that you would have in the bookstore or pass out in a meeting, the, the um, LED light actually flashes green when your response has been received. And there's a setting inside a turning point that will um, allow you to say like an invalid answer, right? So if they pressed five and it was, and there's no five there, you only have four answers, it will come back and flash red like, oh, no, that's not the right answer. So there are settings in there and it does give them a bit more information. Um, it requires them to look at it, but it does give them more information to know if they did or did not get their answer in. And the other thing that I have found, too, is even though I tell my students it doesn't matter where you sit and it does, you don't have to point at anything because they always want to, like, point at the screen because we're so, we're so, yes, we're so used to pointing our remote, at, you know, from our TV at the things. But I actually have had a student last semester that sat at the back of the room and went like this every time. I don't know. He just was really, really dynamic about it. And I thought, well, he's engaged. You know, let him, let him do it. That's fine. So another thing that our system does is we can use priority ranking. Has anybody ever used priority ranking? This is a really, really interesting thing that you can do. And I just want to show you um, a question that I actually do ask um, in my class. And I teach uh, business classes. I teach mainly the marketing courses. So if you would, but, and let me give you some instructions first, is that what I'm wanting you to do is I want you to rank order the three most ethical professions. In your opinion, the three most. So the one that you push in first is the one that you think is the, the most. So if you think accountants are the most ethical, you would first push in an eight. And then if you thought lawyers were the next, you would push in a seven and so on and so forth. So now you only have three choices. If, because you only are putting your top three, if you put in a fourth one, it knocks your top one out. So make sure that you only put three in. So go ahead and I'll let you guys do that. And once you've used a priority ranking in class once, the students kind of get the instructions. So you probably only have to go through that instruction once with them, and then they, they kind of get it. Um, the other thing that um, I will warn you about, and that is that the system, as soon as you punch in your first one, 
the system says you've punched in. So what I normally do, and I'm wanting you to type, put in three answers. So what I normally do is when I see that we've gotten to 14 and I know that there are 14 of us here, sometimes I will verbally say, is everybody done? Just to make sure you put in all three because it's telling me that you've at least put in one, right? But I want to make sure that you've put in all three. So I just verbally kind of ask, okay, and everybody's done. Okay, and everybody's done. And so let's see how you guys... Takes a little, I know, it takes a little while for it to settle in. I know everybody's like, oh, they're equal across the board. Now, this is really interesting because this is how it always comes out. Nurses always come out the highest. And here's what I actually do then. Um, and I do find it interesting that telemarketers are at the low end, as are lawyers. Um, usually, if accountants are kind of high, it's because we usually have some accountants in the room. Um, or people that, that or people that teach in accounting, um, so that's why those usually come out higher. Now I teach in business, and I'm, I, I I work with accountants, so I'm not saying anything bad. Um, but nurses always come out come out highest, and then what I do is I actually bring in real data from real surveys that are done in the world, and so then I compare how my students felt to real world statistics. And so that kind of gets them engaged. They're like, wow, we're thinking like everybody else does. So you can do this with any kind of statistics, with any kind of questions. Poll them first and then show them or talk to them about how the, the real world, as it were, kind of um, feels about this particular topic. So nurses are actually number one off of this list. So and this is just a short list of them um, as well. I do notice senators is not always very high either. Nice funeral directors. That's good. All right. So that's priority ranking. And um, I like using that because um, I think the students kind of get a kick out of that one, too. And then I often use opinion. Oh, yeah. Is there a limit to what, how many? You, you can, can do as many as you want. Ten. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, like so they could have ranked the whole list. Yeah. If that's what you want. Okay. Yes, I could have. And what ends up happening is when I ask you to rank your top three, for instance, when you typed in, let's say you put nurses for, for the first one, your vote gives nurses a 10. And then your second vote gives whatever, let's say you said lawyers was number two, gives them a nine. And then it, it takes everybody's and mathematically figures it all out. And then yep. how does that show on individual reports? Can you see how they each one yes. all your choices? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I use this all the time. I teach marketing. Um, and I'm not really sure exactly what fields and disciplines you guys are in. Um, but we can always try and find out people's opinions on things and really create discussion about that. So another way to get them engaged, and I just kind of put a silly question up here for you guys. If Cinderella's stepmother and stepsister has been, had been better people, do you still think Cinderella would have met and married the prince? All right, 13 of us are in, 14th wants to plead the fifth. Okay, all right, okay, very good. Um, all 14 are in. Somebody, a couple people did actually want to plead the fifth. Some people said yes. So now we could actually talk about kind of, well, how do, why do you feel that way and get them engaged in a discussion. Obviously, I know it's kind of a silly question, um, but we could actually talk about, well, why do you feel that way and um, talk a little bit more about that. And... I actually asked uh, a couple weeks ago, I put a, a dichotomous question up on the board and I, uh, above on the screen, and I asked my students if they thought technology was a good thing or a bad thing, and it was just good or bad. And I actually had a student say, well, shouldn't there be a third choice? And I said, no. And they're like, okay. And so I, I made them, I forced them to think about which way they wanted to think because I knew the discussion was going to come to, it depends. I knew, but I didn't want to give them that easy out to begin with. Because it'd be like, well, it depends, and I'll just click that, right? I wanted them to really think through, well, do I feel yes or no? Which one do I feel more strongly toward? And then we all came to the conclusion, well, it just kind of does depend. And so the discussion led to that, and I thought that that was really rich by doing it that way. Peer instruction. Um, Eric Mazur, um, a Harvard uh, physicist, actually wrote a really great book, and if anybody's interested in reading more about peer instruction, he, it's a great read. And his name is Eric Mazur, and the book is entitled Peer Instruction. And I'll also reference another um, in, uh, book in just a few, sec few minutes as well. But peer instruction basically forces the student, the learner, to think about their idea first. And then it actually um, enables them to talk to each other and each actually
kind of teach each other. So it's a great teaching technique and teaching tool, and it teaches the students that not only can they be the learner, but they can also be the teacher. And so I'm going to demonstrate this for you. I'm going to show you the different steps first. First thing you do is you poll the students individually, just like normal. It's no different. You just poll the students individually. And then you allow them to discuss their answers. And what Eric Mazur suggests is you actually get the students to move around the room and find somebody that answered differently than themselves. So don't just sit to your, sit to your, say to your neighbor, what would you answer? See, I did too. Yeah, okay, well, why? Okay, great. Okay, there's no discussion there. But if you make them actually physically get up and move around and say, well, I answered C, you answered B, now let's talk about it. Then it gets them even more engaged and they can actually teach and learn and try to convince each other of why they're right. And what's really interesting is Eric Mazur comes to our user conferences quite often. He's a keynote speaker. He talks about his peer instruction. And when he does, he puts a question. Uh, now, it's a physics question. <laughs> I know nothing about physics. But he asks this physics question. And I imagine probably 90% of us in there aren't physics people. But we're so, number one, we're really engaged. We're like, we want to get this right. And so then he says, okay, get up and move. And here you're talking about, I mean, adults, right? That we would just be happy just to kind of sit and go, did you get C? Yeah, I did C. Yeah, okay, fine, right? Mm. But we actually get up and move around. And so it's amazing to see that you can get anybody to do this. And you can get the students to buy in. So I'm going to um, finish with this. Then what you do is you poll the students again, see if their answers have changed. And you can do that by showing a comparative link slide. 